Hi, my name is Brian and I'm a structural fitter and a lot of people I know build the tools, a couple of tools like this. This one is for marking things on tubing and this one is for marking things against the flange, making a square line against the flange. Often people have two or three of these. Uh, what uh, I've got about six different tools here to show you. But I'm going to show you my replacement for this first, for both of those tools. And that is this device here. Uh, we make this work by popping that into there. And uh, the rulers sit nice and flat against my material. And then I can mark whatever I want and I can uh, set this to any distance I want here. And I have preset measurements here. Uh, you know, this is three quarters of an inch to there. And uh, you know, same thing up here. I have some preset measurements that I put in there. And uh, then we can take the same tool and we can flip it around like this. And we can use it inside of our, up against our flange like that. And once again, we can set this like this any way we want. And um, our preset measurements now are one inch offset further over. And if we take this and we set this to the 5 16 thickness of the material, now we uh, can use our ruler as one inch uh, offset over. So that's now one inch from the edge and two inches and three inches and so on. Um, I consider it to be a pretty handy tool. I use it all the time. Uh, the next tool that I use all the time those, is my uh, magnetic straight edge. Oh, sticks pretty good. Um, this has two magnets on it. There's one at the back here, so that can come apart. So I can use this as a straight edge like that. Uh, but uh, then when I want to cut, and this is uh, fits in between the flanges, when I want to cut something longer in between the flanges, I can stick it in like this, and now I have a much longer straight edge. If I need to do an angle cut or anything else, I'm not limited by the, the flanges. Uh, this is an extremely handy tool. I'm using this thing constantly. Um, the next uh, most commonly used tool is for uh, finding angles. A lot of drawings, uh, they use a, a metric uh, system like this or um, imperial. And what we have here is a device for finding that right away. So from my pivot point here, to my um, to this edge is 250 millimeters and from the pivot point here to this edge is one foot so I can set my angle and measure either off of this edge or this edge and use that to uh, find the angle uh, that's required on the drawing I use this quite a bit and I find uh, most people they'll, they draw it out they use a uh, uh, squares and they draw it out on a piece of steel and then uh, they use an angle finder to find their angle. I use this and then an angle finder. Um, so, uh, my next tool, let's see, is uh, this one here. Now this, I don't use this very often. This is all just for a battery here. I, I made it electric uh, so that we can see uh, in the dark. If I happen to be working in a dark place, that was kind of an extra I didn't need. But this tells me the, uh, the uh, angle of my pipe. So when I got to do a cope on one side and I got to spin it around, I got to do a cope on the other side, I can, uh, I can set it up so it's exactly lined up. And I can do a quarter turn, I can do a half turn on that, um, all the way around. Uh, so, and this can be moved. Uh, you can use this on larger pipe uh, to find a location and then take it and put it on the other side and find the same location and mark it so that you can line things up on longer, bigger pieces of pipe. This works on anything from one inch to uh, two feet in diameter pipe. Um, there's that. And then the next thing is, um, these are, I mean, pretty standard magnets. Uh, I made these myself. This magnet here, if you pull this lever up, it becomes a very weak magnet that you can put on and off. And then if you push that down, it becomes very strong. Um, simply moving the magnet in and out of the material that I have there. Uh, so, um, magnets, a lot of people make magnets, but they don't make magnets that you can set them in these odd ways. Uh, a very common 
uh, thing that we make in structural are uh, uh, frames for the openings on roofs and ceilings and they hang on the trusses here and they have to be offset by uh, anywhere from a quarter or three eighths, uh, maybe a half an inch on big stuff. Um, so this can be set up for any of those and when I want my when I want to get if I need to offset it that far I can set it on there and I can get it to my position and once again it can be even easier if I flip that up I can easily if I have to angle it or what have you and then flip down the magnet um, another use for it so what this is is more about the frame that you can you can do different things with and a way to attach a frame to the magnets. Here I'm just using bolts, but um, if we could find a better way, that would be a quicker method of attaching and detaching magnets uh, onto the frame in different arrangements. Uh, another arrangement I have here is this one. I find this really handy, uh, putting plates onto square round tubing. And this is often used in uh, handrail and stuff like that. And uh, I've got this one set up so that I can change the angle uh, to whatever I might need for the base plate and we can take it up there same thing with the magnets if I want to make it weak so I can adjust and make it strong and then it really locks on there so uh, another item I uh, I frequently use is this one and uh, I've uh, mounted a laser and so that is exactly one quarter inch to the edge and one quarter inch to this edge and this way, if I want to stick this onto, um, onto my uh, base plate, and I need to line it up so that my base plate is a it lines up with my other plate is going to go there, I can easily eye up a quarter inch. And I don't have to put any kind of a target on the other side. I can easily eye up a quarter inch. Now, when I put my next plate on here, it'll be directly in line with the plate I have. Um, no lasers that I see, even this one, is too long. If it was about half this width, that would even be better because you never have very much room on the base plate. And you don't want to stick it on the other side or any place else because then you have to put a target. And we don't want to have to do that. So this way we can just stick that on there and we already have the target on the other side where the next base plate's going to go. Uh, same thing goes on here. Uh, this can be handy when uh, placing this to line up with another plate or what have you. Um, okay, so shut that off. Uh, let's see, the next thing that we have, now this is kind of silly, and uh, but when it's really hot, I had a job one time, and my first day, I was sweating so bad, even with a respirator on, that when I went to weld, I couldn't, my, my, I would fog up my lens, even though I had a respirator on and I was holding my breath. By the time I finished a weld, my lens would be all fogged up. So that night, I made this. And uh, it misses the helmet when you flip your helmet up and put it back down. And the shape of the helmet directs the air around your head and across the front of your lens. There's a slight cooling breeze that you feel on your face, which is kind of refreshing and it keeps the lens clear. This is an extremely cheap item that could probably be made for about $2. And um, you could probably sell them for about 10. So, uh, so that's about it. Thank you, for, thank you for your time.